I am resurrection and I am life, says the Lord. Whoever has faith in me shall have life, even though he die. And everyone who has life and has committed himself to me in faith shall not die forever. As for me, I know that my Redeemer lives, and that at the last, he will stand upon the earth. After my awaking, he will raise me up, and in my body, I shall see God. I myself shall see and my eyes behold him who is my friend and not a stranger. For none of us has life in himself, and none becomes his own master when he dies. For if we have life, we are alive in the Lord. And if we die, we die in the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's possession. Happy from now on are those who die in the Lord. So it is, says the Spirit, for they rest from their labors.
pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you this day our brother Kenneth. We thank you for giving him to us, his family and friends, to know and to love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Most merciful God, whose wisdom is beyond our understanding, deal graciously with Kenneth's family in their grief. Surround them with your love that they may not be overwhelmed by their loss, but have confidence in your goodness and strength to meet the days to come. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of Scripture. A reading from the book of Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. The word of the Lord. Now we will recite Psalm 23 in unison. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to to be revealed to all of us. For the creation waits 
with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died for us, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. Be seated. Kenneth Wayne Paul. Kenneth Wayne Paul was an institution in our church and in our community, a real character as a prophet can be. 
He knew Jesus' voice and he listened. He led the church into highways and byways where there was the greatest need to know God's unconditional love. He spoke truth, sometimes to power, and by his example, he called us to do the same. I'm not much on eulogizing, but what I have said and will say about Kenneth is true. In the church, we're fortunate to read and hear spoken often the word of God. Less often do we see some of the more challenging of God's words lived out. Less often do we see love, not judgment, taken into the places where hope is absent. At times, not often, a person comes along who's willing to go into the places where few people choose to go and to lead others into those places. Kenneth was such a person for our generation and for our community. He was an example of the minister God calls baptized persons to be. He was an example of the leader of the church God calls the ordained person to be. Isaiah describes God's call plainly, and he's not referring to a minister of ease as lovely as his words are. Isaiah's vision, as he affirms elsewhere, is to go into the places where people are crying out for help, longing to be noticed, aching to be valued. But the words we read today do not speak directly to the physical circumstances of life. Isaiah here addresses the inner life of people in need. We're taught as children, so long ago that I can't remember the classroom where I sat, that our basic human needs are food, clothing, and shelter. This is true. These are our physical needs that, in greater or lesser measure, allow us to thrive physically. But every single human being, regardless of their circumstances, has needs that are deeper than the physical and just as critical to their thriving. These are the inner cravings, to be loved, to be valued, to be safe, to be useful, to be not afraid, to be accepted as we are for who we are. Scientists and physicians are seeing daily the tragic effects of trauma of being rejected on the inner being of the individual. The love that we crave is not a soft love that dismisses our failings. It's the love of God that accepts us and values us and desires our well-being without condition. It's the love that does not depend on our meeting a standard of judgment and is given freely just because God created each of us and God loves each of us. A love that does not excuse or look past our wrongs, but a love that comes with eyes and a heart wide open. This is a love that cares, a love that dares to look into the eyes of and touch a fellow human being. We all know there are many people in need in our community. In his day, Jesus lifted them up as he touched them, healed them, and then Jesus commissioned us to go to those who are hungry, sick, in prison, those whom our society might choose to hide or forget, those the, in, in people who are persecuted, as the family of Israel was in his day, Isaiah sees how devastation in life brings devastation within. Loss of hope, loss of doubt, I mean, excuse me, doubt of, of worth. Do you remember when in the 1980s the mental hospitals of our country were being closed and patients were being turned out, many of them homeless, onto the streets? 
We were advised as we passed them not to look at them, not to look them in the eye for fear of their approaching us for a handout. Just ignore them, walk past them, we were told. I believe the real fear was that looking into their eyes, we would see the soul of a human being, desperate, without hope, longing for someone to acknowledge him or her. There's a danger here. There's the danger of being asked to do something we think we might not be ready to do. Kenneth Paul dared to look into the eyes of people who were hurting, and he led us to look into their eyes. Kenneth urged us to listen to Isaiah's words and to seek out the people who are ignored or ostracized or hated. He believed we all are anointed, called by God, to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to show them that they are loved. God calls us all to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners from whatever holds them captive, whether it be the dead end of a life of crime or the chains of poverty and narrow opportunity, to release them from the fear that they are forgotten the fear that they're forever condemned. God calls us to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor with the assurance that these people are of great value, to comfort all who mourn and have no one with whom to share their grief, to reassure them that we are with them and God is with them, to assure them that they are beloved of God and of each of us, to give them a garland of hope instead of ashes of grief, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. We can begin by addressing their physical needs, although we might not always be able to change their physical circumstances. We follow Jesus' example in caring for their inner needs. And who were the people of a faint spirit in the 1970s and 80s and 90s when Kenneth opened the doors of the church to people who'd been cast out elsewhere? Well, they were women who were denied ordination, LGBTQ people who left other churches, people of color who were turned away from white churches or if they were allowed to enter, were seated in the back. And they were the same people we know today, our elderly, whose expenses keep going up while they cannot find a decent place to live, a safe shelter that they can afford. Our poor, who because of discrimination and prejudice are offered only substandard, substandard education and limited opportunity so that they're unable to provide adequate food, clothing, and shelter for themselves. Our homeless people who beg for food and clothing and find shelter wherever they can. The people our culture names under, underserved, even as they walk away and dismiss them as without value. They are the people of various faiths whom some Christians deem to be not worthy because they have not come to Jesus. All people hurting for human love and longing to be assured of God's love and of their own worth. Kenneth brought our attention to these children of God and led us to notice them, to value them, to look into their eyes, to touch them, listen to them, and to serve them, to invite them into our lives. Jesus speaks of his flock to those who are known by him and who know his voice and follow him. I don't think he meant only the people in our churches, those of us who wear a cross. I believe Jesus was referring to his other flocks of sheep whose rule of life is to follow the way of love. I believe his dream is that all people will one day choose the way of compassion and mercy. 
Jesus showed us the way of compassion and mercy. Kenneth showed us what it looks like to follow the way of the shepherd's voice. Remember God's words to the priest Samuel? For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. God looks on the heart. Again, the inner life. God searches in love for love and sees the heart of every human being. God sees the heart of mercy in the lives of those who follow Jesus. And God sees the heart of compassion in the lives of those who never heard Jesus' name or who have, ne who have often been excluded because they did not worship Jesus. A few months ago, I reread Thornton Wilder's Pulitzer Prize winning play, Our Town. Naturally, as a teenager, I had missed or forgotten the soul of the play. It's a timeless play about a community in New Hampshire, a community of imperfect people living ordinary lives. Nothing heroic, nothing dramatic. In the story's simplicity, Wilder draws us in to the soul of life. People living in a community are part of one another. We know one another and we care for one another. We share joys and sorrows. We bear one another's burdens. This is part of God's wonderful gift of life. Our time on earth is short. Each of us is given but one life. In God's great scheme of things, each of us has a part, and each of us is, in, is of incalculable value. It will be enduring love, compassion, and mercy, unfailing care for one another, physically and spiritually, that will perpetuate God's plan for healing the world. This is God's call to each of us. This is what it is to be led by Jesus' voice. This is how we live the life that is God's great gift to us. And this is the way we will find the glory Paul writes of, the joy of a life lived serving, serving others who long to be touched, noticed, healed. Kenneth Paul was an icon. Through him, his teaching and his actions we could see the way Jesus showed us to life in all its fullness. The Church of the Holy Cross would not be who we are today were it not for Kenneth's leadership. Our community would not be the same either. Kenneth dedicated his life to the people in our community who had been left out. He was only one life, but he was an example for all of us and his ministry was multiplied in all of us. As we commend him to God's eternal care and thank God for his life among us, we can say together today with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven that Kenneth Paul's life was a life well lived. Amen. Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary, he suffered under the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven.
For our brother Kenneth, let us pray to our Lord Jesus Christ who said, I am resurrection and I am life. Lord, you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Kenneth and dry the tears of those who weep. Hear us, Lord. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow. Hear us, Lord. You raise the dead to life. Give to our brother eternal life. Hear us, Lord. You promised paradise to the thief who repented. Bring our brother to the joys of heaven. Hear us, Lord. Our brother was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give him fellowship with all your saints. Hear us, Lord. He was nourished with your body and blood. Grant him a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. Hear us, Lord. Comfort us in our sorrows at the death of our brother. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. Hear us, Lord. Father of all, we pray to you for Kenneth and for all those whom we love but see no longer. Grant to them eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. May his soul and the souls of all the departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. All that, because there's no point in my having all this over there. Peace, Ginger. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm Father Garrett Boyd. I'm the rector of Holy Cross. Allow me to welcome you uh, to Church of the Holy Cross. I uh, appreciate you all being here today and for keeping our church and especially Kenneth's family in your prayers during this time. Here in just a moment, we're going to have uh, Holy Eucharist or Holy Communion. Uh, please know that all baptized Christians are welcome to receive Holy Eucharist in the Episcopal Church. If you would like to receive, you'll come forward at the time and kneel along this altar rail, altar rail here at the front. To receive the bread, you place your hands out like so, and the bishop will come by and place the bread in your hands. To receive the wine, uh, either I or Priest Mary will come by. Help us guide the chalice to your lips. Uh, that way we don't have any unfortunate accidents for the altar guild to clean up later. <laughs> And if you don't want to receive the wine, know that that's not required. You may simply get up after receiving the bread, or you may cross your arms uh, while the wine passes by you. Uh, and if you'd like to come up and receive a blessing and not receive the Eucharist, you're also welcome to do that. Simply come forward and cross your arms, and the bishop or one of us will give you a blessing at that time. Or you may remain in your seat. Whatever you're most comfortable with, whatever is most authentic to your traditions, we welcome you to participate in whichever way possible. I'm not aware of anything else that needs Although to be announced. If they can't kneel, they can Oh, stand. yes. If you can't, if you're not able to come forward, thank you. If you're not able to uh, physically come forward and would like to receive communion, if you could just raise your hand so we know who to bring it to. No one. Any... Anybody else? Okay. I got two. Do I hear three? Do I hear three? <laughs> All right. Thank you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
congregation please rise? The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who rose victorious from the dead and comforts us with the blessed hope of everlasting life. For to your faithful people, O Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when our mortal body lies in death, there is prepared for us a dwelling place eternal in the heavens. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, and heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Son in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Son in the highest. We give thanks to you, O oh God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him... You have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ. And bring us to that heavenly country where, with the Blessed Virgin Mary and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, Hallelujah! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Beloved, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Behold what you are. Become what you receive.
Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you that in your great love you have fed us with the spiritual food and drink of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, and have given us a foretaste of your heavenly banquet. Grant that this sacrament may be to us a comfort in affliction and a pledge of our inheritance in that kingdom where there is no death, neither sorrow nor crying, but the fullness of joy with all your saints, through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints. For sorrow and pain are no more, neither sign but life everlasting. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of mankind. And we are mortal, formed of the earth, and to earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created me, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant and to the saints, for sorrow and pain are no more, neither sign but life into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Kenneth. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. God be in your head and in your understanding. God be in your eyes and in your looking. God be in your mouth and in your speaking. God be in your heart and in your thinking. God be at your end and at your departing. In the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you forevermore. Amen. Amen. And now, children of God, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
Thank mm-hmm. you.